Hey guys, it's Helen here from Little H Creates back again. I'm working on the hatch that I've got over here. I'm actually just doing a final coat or two of um, the Rust-Oleum chalked protective top coat. Um, just I'm trying to use up stuff that I've had in my garage um, for a while. I used this on another project. Um, I think Guy at Bunnings recommended it to me um, to use on a chalk paint project that I'd done and yeah look it, it did the job then it will do the job now um this this unit is something i got free it was sort of not in great condition not quite sure what i was doing with it um i have done a homemade chalk paint because i was trying to just experiment see what it was like i like to to mix things and make things up myself um and play around a bit so the recipe i used you know see my back a bit sorry the recipe i used for this was um a quarter cup of carbon cal calcium carbonate sorry calcium carbonate and i just got that from my local pet shop and then that was the two cups of paint now i used an enamel paint because that's just what i had to hand like i said i'm trying to use up a whole bunch of stuff i found in the garage um the enamel paint i have is water-based so when you're doing this type of thing you know with a water-based uh, with a with like a chalk paint that you're making you want it to be water-based um, so a lot of a lot of recipes talk about using a latex or an acrylic. Um, I don't know. I think in Australia, I don't think we call paint latex. So I was like, well, the enamel says that it's extra strong and durable, but it is water based. So I figured that will do the job. Um, the first batch I did worked really well, and um, it was really thick, so I had really good coverage. Except I used the bottom dregs of a can, and what happened there was it. Um, I got some rust from the tin. So my last, my second coat, on my last few strokes of the brush, I ended up getting these lovely brown spots all over my um, my unit. So what I had to do was I had to go and make up some more paint to then sort of sand back and touch up where I had these beautiful, not so beautiful brown brown splotches. Um, but that's all right. The second second batch I made, I seem to make it a bit thinner. Um, so I think the dregs at the bottom of a tin helped to um to give it a bit of thickness you know the bottom of your tin that you maybe haven't mixed so well always gives you a little bit of extra um thick paint so that probably helped a little bit um to give me um a thicker one then the second one i probably i made i needed to use more calcium um carbonate but i didn't have space in the pot that i was using to mix it so then I, I made up a third batch and that worked really well. Um, white is a really difficult color for coverage. Um, and I think, you uh, you know, you it's a bit of trial and error when you make your own paint. You you know, depending on the type of paint you're using and your your quantities um, of paint to, to calcium carbonate, um, I think it just depends what you're gonna come out with at the end. So I think, you know, when you do buy a shop-bought paint, you're probably going to get a better coverage. You're going to get a better um, finish. But this was something I sort of wanted to do a bit cheaply. Um, I do want it to have that rustic look, so I'm not too fussed about the paint being a little bit, I guess, blotchy in spaces, because that's kind of the look I'm going for. Um, I have done some distressing on it, so I am kind of giving it that look. Um... So yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at with the chalk base paint. It, it was a bit tricky to um, to make and, and, and to kind of get the consistency each time, but it is the first time I've made chalk paint and I'll, I'll probably do it again for some whites, especially if I wanted to sort of keep the cost down for something. Um, but saying that, I do think with the... Um, the, the shop, you know, well, the, the pre-made ones that you buy from, from your supplier, I do think you're going to get a better um, um, coverage. Now, you're probably thinking I'm not painting everywhere on this. I've already done two coats of the clear. I, I had it flipped over the other way. So this is really just sort of touching up sort of some thin layers on the back, but giving the, the bases a few... Um, sort of a, a nice coating because it was a bit hard to to get to the um to the, the bottom when it was the other way around 
and vice versa it's a bit hard to paint and then to see how you're painting when it's when you're doing the the roof as such so it's just much easier to to paint turning your units around sometimes um you know just work in the space you've got and the light you've got and changing angles up you see things a bit differently or where you've maybe missed so so this is kind of getting a third coat in most places and a second good coat um, mainly on the base and I'll, I'll make sure I cover the outer edges um, and I didn't didn't do anything up there because it was on the floor so I've got to make sure I get a good couple of coats on there um, I don't think I'm that happy with this rust-oleum I have to say it does have like a yellow tinge to it once it's dried and I can see in a couple of spots where I've maybe um, had a couple of, of drips um, I've been quite careful to make sure I um, I brush those all out at the end because especially in so like in this detail here I've got some grooves and what happens is is you'll get drips going down those grooves if you've used too much paint so you do want to be careful and rather do more thin layers than lots of thick ones but it's still kind of you know gravity it's pulled a little bit in some sections and you can kind of see that yellowing color um, again doesn't bother me too much for this piece because um, it, it works with with what I'm looking for but I think if you were going for a pure white um, I think this would be a this this product will actually totally ruin a pure white um, piece that you're trying to aim for because it, it has yellowed and not major like if you look at it now you wouldn't you wouldn't see anything but um, I can obviously tell from what the paint was underneath to what the varnished parts are looking like um, but yeah if anybody else has used this and has any any thoughts then give us a shout oh on another note I'm using a sleek brush that I've cut down because this section here was getting a bit difficult to paint and I don't know if, if you guys know, the sleek brushes have that green paint on the end. And when, if you scratch that against your paint, because it's white, I was getting the green paint scraping onto my white. Um, so I had to sand down a couple of spaces just to get rid of the green paint from the paintbrush. So I've cut it down just that I don't, A, it makes it a bit easier to fit, but then I don't get the green um, paint scratching my, my white paint. Catch you guys later.